Hi, this is Mr. YY and today we are going to talk about a topic that might excite some of you, especially those people who love to do shopping. So today's topic is about preparing for the arrival of your newborn baby, um, the items that are essential, um, especially when you want to go to the hospital or at home um, in anticipation of the baby's arrival. Before we start, a big congratulations to all of you who are expecting your new baby soon. Um, this exciting moment and I hope we are, we are here to share your joy as well. Today's list is going to come in two separate sections. The first list is essential items that um, you need to prepare to bring to the hospital. So things that you can pack up beforehand before going to the hospital when your water breaks. And um, this list before we start is, uh, I have to caveat that this is a UK centric list because we had our delivery in the UK. So it might not apply to uh, say a baby born outside of the UK. But these are still items that is essential that you need at your home as well. So the second list is a list of items that you need to buy and prepare at home before you bring your baby back home. The first item on the list is clothes. So I, I know this is a uh, no-brainer. Everyone knows that you need to buy clothes for a baby, but how many? So I would like to suggest that you don't buy too much of a clothes because you never know how fast your baby is going to grow, even though you might know roughly what's the birth weight of the baby. So for us, Mila was born 3.3 kilograms and um, at that time, we thought, oh wow, we can buy a lot of um, zero to three months old baby clothes, but um, she outgrew all these clothes in the first month. So from second month onwards, so for the last two months, she has been wearing her three to six months old clothes and she's actually outgrowing those three to six months clothes as well. So probably in a week or two weeks time, we're going to start to put her into those six to nine months old clothes as well. So don't buy too many, that's my, that's my advice. And um, I think maybe you can buy those pre-packed um, packages from like say Marks and Spencer and stuff like that where they have got like a seven day um, clothes for the baby and a couple of sets of clothes as well. So those would work. And um, yeah, don't buy too many, that's the first advice. The second item is muslin square or muslin cloth. And they are very, very important. I, I can't emphasize how important because you use them for as a bib, you use them as a, to wipe them up uh, when they vomit, you use them up as a towel for a bath, you use them as a swaddle. So they come in various sizes and I would suggest buying a lot. So probably say 10 of the small ones, which is like uh, 20 by 20 centimeters. And uh, you, I typically use them to um, wash her face and use, her, use them for showering. The medium sizes are about 70 to 80 centimeters uh, each, uh, each size. And those, we use them uh, for multiple purposes like um, to wipe up the vomits as a bib and stuff like that. So I suggest 10 of them as well. And the last one is uh, the 120 by 120, which is quite big. And you usually use them as a swaddle or as a, like a thin um, blanket. And uh, we have four or five of them. So I, I would suggest getting those and those numbers um, is up to you, but we have been using them on a daily basis and we think that those number works and you, you use them throughout the different months as well. It's not like the baby grow bigger and you need more. So yeah, do get quite a number of them. So items number three, four, and five are all relating to um, nappy changes. Um, nappies, I think similar to the concept of clothing, um, I would suggest not to buy too much because um, you don't know how fast or how big your baby is going to grow. And um, nappies are in varying sizes from zero all the way to size six. And they, they basically are based on the weight of the baby. So. Um, zero is for newborn baby, but I would suggest that you bring by size number one because it ranges from two to five kilogram. And um, we bought a bundle of 98 um, of them and they lasted for probably between 10 to 14 days. So on average, we use about six to 10 diapers or six to 10 um, nappies each day. And um, so it lasts for quite a while while you, you can decide whether or not you want to up the size, keep the same size um, after, right? So I think probably first buy something like a pack of 98 or even like say maybe half 56 or something like that and uh, decide going forward whether you want to change the sizes or not. The next one would be your nappy cream and I would strongly strongly suggest that you apply every single time that you change the nappy because I think I mean you know if a baby have a rash they probably feel uncomfortable they'll keep crying and you want to avoid um, any form of situation whereby they might uh, feel uncomfortable and they might cry. So um, applying nappy cream is 
takes a few seconds. So just buy like a big bottle of pseudo cream, 400 gram, and they last for ages. So until now, our bottle is still, I think there's still more than half left uh, after three months. So just buy a big bottle and apply them um, generously, apply it across all the lines and everywhere um, that, that you think is going to be affected so that you can protect the baby. And then baby wipes. I think we, when we first shopped for the baby wipes, we thought, okay, buy a box of like, say, 12 pack from Asta and they will last for a while. But uh, when we went to the midwife, they were saying that try to go for those that say 99% water because uh, it is better for a baby. These have less allergens, have less um, chemicals that, that might affect the baby. So, I mean, if you could just buy them because the prices ranges from like say 50p to I don't know, one, two pounds. Baby wipes are essential. You use them every, day, every time you change the nappy. So try to use uh, better quality ones. The next three items all relates to feeding. So even if you choose to do exclusively breastfeeding like us, I think it doesn't hurt to have a formula, a tin of formula uh, at the side just in case. And uh, also, of course, you have to buy the bottles to prepare the milk. But I think it's important because at the start, the first few days or first one, two weeks, you realize that the quantity of the milk is actually quite little. So we tried doing a pumping and we realized the colostrum was only like 10 milliliters or 15 milliliters. So we feel that that's definitely not enough and the baby is going to keep crying, right? So what we did was we supplement the last feed of the day with a bottle of formula. And that actually did help a lot to keep her full and sleep through the night. So I think it's very important to be a bit flexible in that sense because at the start, you, you really don't know the quantity of the milk that you are able to produce. So, and, and right now, I, I can tell you three months down the road, um, we have enough milk um, and we can breastfeed exclusively. We don't use the formula at all anymore. And I, I think it's just a it's just a phase to go through. Next one is the breastfeeding dress. And um, we were not even aware of such a product at all until our friend actually recommended us to buy some before we go to the hospital because um, after you give birth, you after you deliver, you have to change your first set, set of clothes, right? And, um, and you want to be able to fit the baby um, comfortably, conveniently. So I think it was uh, one of the best purchases that we have made. Uh, we actually bought four or five of them now so that we, we get to change them every day and we don't have to actually do laundry every single day. And so this last item that I would like to suggest for what to bring to the hospital is something which I didn't actually buy beforehand as well. And I realized the importance of it after. So it's actually a pram set which comes with like a car seat, a pram. And uh, the pram can actually be converted into like a baby, uh, a stroller. And um, I think why is it important is because even if you want to bring the baby home, it's actually um, illegal to actually put a, carry your baby in, a, in an Uber. So you need to actually put them in the car seat to bring them home. So we were quite lucky that the, our Uber driver was uh, uh, happy to bring us home and actually drove quite slowly so that we can hug the baby home safely. But... Um, it is important to have a car seat anyway. So you might want to buy a car seat or you might just want to buy a whole pram set. The only reason why we didn't get a whole pram set at the start was because we thought it was COVID and we are not going to go out anyway. So we are going to just stay at home. But I mean, eventually we still went out. So it is good to just have that um, ahead of time, um, plan it and uh, just get something. Um, it doesn't have to be really expensive as well. So uh, what I'll do is I'll drop the link below in the, for the model that I actually have and I'll do a quick review. And we only spent something like 250 pounds on, on the prem and we were really happy with the whole, whole product. So moving on to the items that you want to have at home to prepare and welcome your baby home. The first one is definitely you need to shower your baby, bathe your baby. So get a bathtub with a small stool to prevent yourself from uh, straining your back. And um, yeah, and you can, the advice at the start was to just bathe the baby with clear water. So you that doesn't have to buy like say shower gel and stuff for the baby. But uh, we, we went ahead and just bought those Johnson & Johnson um, shampoo and stuff. So um, prepare ahead. Um, the first bath is going to be an exciting time. You're going to be the first time she's going to be squirming around, sleeping around in your hand. So be mentally prepared, but it's not, it's not actually that scary. Uh, just, just be brave. Hold her tightly, firmly, um, yeah, everything will be okay. The next item I can tell you now that I, I cannot live without is the nappy bin. Because we change nappy so many times, six to ten times a day. And um, the, the smell actually is quite strong. So to prevent yourself from having a house that is filled with all this smell, get yourself a, a nappy bin. 
we have got a one one that is a uh, Tommy TP that uh basically have a cartridge and uh, every time you bin the nappy, you twist it so that the it prevents the smell from coming out. But there are some bins that are um basically cartridge um free, so you don't have to keep buying those expensive cartridge, but you have a proper seal that seals the smell in it. So either way, just do yourself a favor and get one of them for you for your house. And then next, of course, you need to put your baby to sleep somewhere. You have a lot of options. You have got cribs, you have cord, you got bassinet and, and many out there. But if space permits, I mean, I'll, I sh we went for the cord because I think the cord uh, allows the baby to actually grow in it so that she can over time when she grows up, she can still sleep in the same place. You don't have to keep changing it. And um, I think economically, it makes the most sense. And um, it's also helpful that she gets used to her own cord. The next item is usually comes as a set in like say pharmacies and uh, it includes those nail clippers, thermometers and combs etc etc. But um, what I think is most important in the set is essentially the nail, nail clipper and the thermometer because you don't want your baby to keep scratching themselves and ha having all the scratches. So make sure you get those uh, sets with nail clippers so that you can cut their fingernails uh, regularly. And also the thermometer is something that is more like uh, it's essential because when the baby cries, uh, sometimes you don't know what's happening. You want to make sure that she's not ill, she's not sick, she's not having a fever and stuff. So make sure you get a thermometer as well. And last but not least, um, for people who plans to do breastfeeding or expressing to feed the baby in the bottle, um, get yourself a, a breast pump. We have done, uh, we've actually bought both manual first and then we bought the electric uh, afterwards. And we realized that the electric actually works a lot better. Uh, if there's time, I'll try to create, a, I'll do a video on the comparison between these two products. But uh, I, I think personally, the electric pump is very convenient. It's, it actually saves you a lot of time compared to doing the manual one. And uh, it's actually a lot more comfortable as well. So um, if you have enough money, if you financially it's not a problem, try to invest in the breast pump because in the long run, it will save you a lot of time, a lot of effort and a lot of pain. So there you go. Here's the list of all the items which I think are important to prepare and buy before the arrival of the baby. In the description below, I'll list all these items as well as the links of the items which I personally use and buy. In addition, I'd like to say that there will be a second video where I will share with you the items which I think are important for the baby's development, which you should buy. Not now, it's not an urgent um, purchase, but you should buy them later so that you can see the temperament of your baby, you can see what your baby likes um, and then make these purchases. And so for now, happy shopping and thanks for watching.